Section 1. You will hear a conversation between a welfare tutor of Student Union and two overseas students, Claudia and Bastito. They are talking about their life and study in Leeds University. First, you have a chance to read questions 1 to 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 10. Excuse me, is this Welfare Office of Student Union? We've wandered outside for a long time. Yes, this is the Welfare Office. We're students from Architecture Faculty. Our Professor Thompson asked us to come. Ah, yes. You must be Claudia and Bautisto. How are you? Your Professor has mentioned your names through the telephone. Fine, thank you. As a welfare tutor, my job is interviewing overseas students and help. Therefore, your arrival doesn't mean you will tackle the problems alone. I have a lot of things to ask you. I want to know how you feel about life in Leeds University. Who will be first? Oh, Claudia, please. OK. Um, this is the first semester, isn't it? Could you please tell us what is your first impression about the Leeds University? Well, when I first came to this university, I was struck by how quiet it is here in the evening. The shops close so early. In the States, you can always buy what you want in the evening, but here, shops close before half past five. Yes, Leeds is supposed to be a quiet place. Where did you live when you first came here? I went to the student hostel. It has a big lounge, recreation room, and most important, I don't have to cook for myself. How is the food there? Do you like English food? It is too bland, but healthy. You can't complain too much when you study abroad. Yes, right. Oh, dear. How are the local students? To be frank, it is difficult for me to make many friends with British students. They're rather reserved and cold, not friendly. They seem to keep themselves. Oh, it is a pity. Well, how about the academic courses in the architecture faculty? Well, I'm doing my master's degree in this department. All right. How are you finding your courses? I really love my work. I did pretty well. I've enjoyed the courses, but the lecturers are very busy and you hardly have contact with them. Well, that doesn't sound good. What is your suggestion to improve your course? Well, in my opinion, I think it is advisable to have regular meetings with lecturers. For example, once a week or a fortnight. Regular meetings. That sounds great. Thank you, Claudia. We will come back to you in a minute and then we will ask Batisto. Batisto, are you from the Philippines? Manila, to be exact. And how did you feel about the Leeds University when you first came here? Interesting. It is an interesting place. The city is beautiful. Everywhere is green and lush. It is very cool in summer. I like summer here. But the winter is awful. The drizzle is terrible. Everywhere is cold and wet. How about your accommodation? Do you like it? Well, at first I lived with a family. They are friendly. They have twins. They are of the same age as me, and we all like soccer very much. However, it is noisy and difficult to study. Oh, I see. Two months ago, I moved out of the family and now live in the student dormitory with another three students. It is much cheaper. They are very friendly, and I like to live there. And what about your courses? Do you like it? I am doing my bachelor degree. Apart from language difficulties, how do you find out about your studies? Well, but... Yes, go on. The main difficulty for me is that the computer centre closes so early and it is always busy and crowded. Students are fussy about it. It is very difficult for me to practice my work. You are not the only person in that position. But can you reserve the computer room? No, we cannot. But it would help if we could reserve the computer time. Yes, I'll look into that and see if we can improve the things over there. Now let's go back to Claudia. 
That is the end of section one. You will have 30 seconds to check your answers. Section 2. You will hear a conversation between a visa officer and an applicant. You have 30 seconds to read the questions first. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Good morning, Visa Office. How can I help you? Good morning. I'd like to apply for a visa to Australia, please. Certainly, sir. I'll just get a form and then I'll need to take some details down. OK, here we go. Right. Can I have your name, please? Yes, it's Akamura. Kelly Akamura. How do you spell that, please? K E L L. No, no, your family name, please. Oh, sorry. It's O K A M U R A. O K A M U R A. And your address? Apartment 106, Kingston Street, Hawaii. Kingston Street, Hawaii. Yes, that's correct. So you're an American? Actually, I was born in Japan, but moved to Hawaii six years ago. And can I have your age, please, Mr Okamura? I'm 32. Uh, are you married? Yes, I am. My wife's Chinese. And will your wife accompany you to Australia? Yes, she will. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. And will your wife accompany you to Australia? Yes, she will. In fact, that's the reason we want to go. Her sister lives in Sydney. And do you have any relatives living in Australia? I used to have an uncle, but he died several years ago. Now there's only my sister-in-law and my wife's cousin. So the purpose of your trip is to visit your wife's relatives, am I correct? Well, not exactly. Mainly because I have my own training company and I will be looking for business opportunities. Although I do want to do some travelling as well. You know, see some of the sights, that sort of thing. Although I don't intend to work in Australia. And your wife? What will she be doing? She'll be studying English. She wants a student visa. And how long do you plan to stay? About one year, I guess. Well, I'm afraid a standard tourist visa is only valid for 30 days, although in your case, we can issue you with a business visa. Business visas last for six months, but you will be able to renew it. We can give your wife a 12-month visa, though. Six months is OK, so what do I need to do now? Come along to the office any time during weekdays, but it must be office hours. We close at 5.30 and bring along two passport-sized photos and your passport, of course. Your wife will also need two photos, so that's four passport-sized photos in total. OK, thank you for your help. Bye. Bye. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You'll hear two students talking about different aspects of their university. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Great party last night. You should have come. But anyway, so what have we got to do here? We are supposed to fill this form in by ourselves, but I'm sure it's okay if we chat about it first, don't you think? Yeah, sure. So... There are 10 questions, and we've got to tick numbers 1 to 5 for each question. 5 means really good. 1 is bad. Question number 1. Was the course well organized? We'll give that a 5, agree? Yep. No question about that. What does question 2 mean, though? Was the teacher flexible? Is it good to be flexible? Well, that means... Was the teacher very strict? Or maybe she gave you more time to complete your assignment. Things like that. So for that question, we should give her a five. She always gave us an extra day, didn't she? And she wanted to know our opinions on things. We had great discussions. Fair enough. What about this one? Was the teacher friendly and encouraging? I'm not sure about that. She was friendly to some students, but I think she had a problem with Mike and Alex, who were usually late. She did get a bit irritated with them sometimes. Yeah, we weren't too happy about them either, though. I know it was a bit early, with classes starting at 8.30, but you choose if you want to sign up to them or not, so that's no excuse, really. Yeah. They could have taken the evening classes if they didn't want to wake up early in the morning. Now, what about these questions on the course books? Look, the business studies book was interesting, but I thought the human behavior one was boring. Really? That's the one I liked the most, perhaps because I want to study psychology. You want to become master of the universe, managing a huge multinational company, don't you? There's nothing wrong with being ambitious, you know. The best laid plans of mice and men. What's that? Some sort of quote? Stop being so literary. Let's get on with question five. Did you find the campus library a useful resource? Well, most of the books I wanted had already been taken out. But the internet access was definitely useful. Let's give that a four. Okay, and the staff there were always friendly and helpful. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Now, what's this? You know, they keep going on at us about how we don't use the off-campus library enough. I suppose this question is to test if we know where things are there. So, here's a plan of the library. You use it more than me. I've only been there once, actually. You tell me. Right. So as you go in, the librarian's desk is on your right. Directly opposite is the section for new publications, new books the college has acquired. Some of them are actually written by our own teachers, interestingly enough. Then there's lots of seating and the computers. Behind that, we've got the periodicals, newspapers and magazines. And that's before the reference section, you know, with the books you can't take out. 
dictionaries and encyclopedias? That sort of stuff. Now, I do know where the management section is. It's right at the end on the left, isn't it? Just before the stairs up to the lecture theater. Uh, no. Sorry. Management and business studies, along with marketing, are all as you said, at the back, but on the right. Oh, so what's on the left then? That's the fiction section, or literature. Now, if you want to photocopy something, where do you go? I think I remember. Isn't it one of the rooms after the entrance on the right? Yeah. It's between the multimedia room and the seminar room. They're all behind the librarian's desk. What about the toilets? For those, you have to go downstairs. That's where the computer studies section is, too, for some reason. Let's get on with the next question. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Test 7. Section 4. You will hear a lecturer talking to a group of engineering students about the design of a greenhouse. Before you listen, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon. This is the first of a series of lectures I'll be giving about engineering for sustainable development. I'll be presenting examples of engineering projects from a variety of contexts and today I'm going to talk about a project to design a new kind of greenhouse for use in the Himalayan mountain regions. First of all, I'll tell you about the problem which was the context for this project. In the Himalayan mountains, fresh vegetables and other crops can only be grown outside for about 90 days during the summer because the altitude of the region is around 3,500 meters and because the rainfall is so low. In winter, temperatures fall below minus 25 degrees centigrade so fresh vegetables have to be imported. They arrive by truck in summer or by air in winter, which makes them expensive. Local people rely on dried leafy vegetables and stored root crops during the winter and rarely eat fresh vegetables. But despite the sub-zero temperatures, the skies over the region are cloudless and there are over 300 sunny days per year. So, an engineering solution was needed to exploit the sun's energy and protect locally produced plants from freezing during winter. And in fact, there had been programs in the past to provide greenhouses, but these were unsuccessful. The greenhouses weren't adapted for local conditions, so they tended to fall into disuse. 
So, a few years ago, a project was initiated to design a better greenhouse, one which would meet the criteria for sustainability. So, what are the criteria for sustainability? Well, first of all, the new greenhouse is designed to be relatively simple, so construction is cheap. Locally available materials are used wherever possible. The walls are generally constructed of mud bricks, made locally, although in areas of high snowfall, more resilient walls of stone are needed. Rammed earth is also used. The main roof is generally made from locally available poplar wood with water-resistant local grass for the covering. In addition, the construction and maintenance of the greenhouse is done by local craftsmen. So local stonemasons are employed to build the greenhouse walls and specialised training is provided for them wherever necessary. Then, the greenhouse is designed to run on solar power alone. There's no supplementary heating. And lastly, families are selected to own one of the new greenhouses with great care. They have to have a site which is suitable for constructing it on. They also have to be keen to make a success of using it and also to share the produce with the wider community through sale or barter. Potential owners are taken to see existing greenhouses before they make a final decision about having one. So, those are the features which make the project sustainable. And now, I'll briefly describe the design of the greenhouse. The greenhouses are orientated very carefully along an east-west axis, so that there's a long south-facing side. The transparent cover on the south-facing side is made from a heavy-duty polythene, which should last for at least five years. On the inside of the greenhouse, the walls are painted. The rear and west-facing walls are black to improve heat absorption, but the east-facing wall is white to reflect the morning sunlight onto the crops inside. Finally, there's a door in the wall at one end, and vents are incorporated into the roof, the door and the wall at the other end, to enable control of humidity and prevent overheating. I'll turn now to the benefits which have resulted from the introduction of these new greenhouses. These benefits are of various kinds, but for now I'll just mention the social benefits. First of all, people who own a greenhouse gain social standing in their communities because they provide vegetables for the wider community, for regular consumption as well as for festivals, and they also earn income. Secondly, because in rural areas it is women who usually grow the food, the greenhouses have increased their opportunities. They bring the benefits of improved nutrition and increased family income from the sale of surplus produce. And thirdly, as a result of their improved financial position, some families can now afford to educate their children for the first time. That is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.